people, you better stop questioning the word of God and start doing what it says. Just do what it says. Some say you don't take the word of God literally, you better take it literally. Amen, you better begin to take it literally. Amen, and save yourselves from this untoward generation. Turn with me to Matthew 24. Come on, brother, read on there. Is that Ephesians? Ephesians 3. And for this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles. Yes. If you are here of the dispensation yes. of the grace of God, of the grace of God, which is given me to you, which is given me to you, Lord, how that by revelation, how that by revelation, made known unto me, made known unto me the mystery, the mystery as I wrote before in a few words. As I wrote before in a few words, that's Paul talking. Okay. It was given to Paul. The mystery, the revelation was given to Paul. Well, you know, it's something that they hear all the time, you know. What that Paul's backslidden pastor preached up there, they're taking it away. Amen. I hear people like to philosophize. You like to philosophize about the word. Amen. You like to philosophize about the word and act as if you've been given more than what's written here. That make you a liar. As good as I'm going to try them. Yeah. But the only thing I can try by is the written word of God. Amen. Can't, well, you can't try by anything else. Amen. Amen. I want you to go to Matthew 24, brother. Anybody can the Bible or stay at home. Yes, my friend. Here the brother said anybody that disputes the word of God, you might as well give up and go home. Amen. Come on, brother, you're just wasting your time. Don't wear out the leg on your shoes. That's right. Amen, don't bother, you're just wasting time. Amen. But you know what, I believe that many of you out there, you'll wear out that leather because it's all about money. That's all. It's not about the people. That's right. Amen, all about the money. Right. Amen, many of you couldn't find another way to make any money, so you make money off God. <laughs> Amen, many of you couldn't find any way to make any money. You're out there driving around and flashy cars, you've got big churches, you've got wonderful homes, and you built it off the back of the people. Yeah, on their way to the lake. Amen. You're on your way to the lake. You built all that off the back of the people. Yes. You burdened them and they brought the money in and you paid yourself like you're a czar. Read on there. Matthew 24 verse 1. Read for me, brother. And Jesus went out and Jesus went out and departed from the temple and departed from the temple and his disciples came to him and his disciples came to him for to show him the, for to show him the building the building come on of the temple of the temple and Jesus said unto them, and Jesus said unto him see ye not see ye not all these things all these things Verily, verily, I say unto you, I say unto you that is truly, yes, read on. There shall not be, there shall not be left here, left here, one stone, one stone upon another, upon another that shall not, that be, shall not be thrown down. Be thrown down. Now, if I go to Peter, Amen. I'm going to read something for you. Amen. Right here in Peter, Amen. Chapter two, Second Peter, chapter three. Amen. And verse 9. So 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 9. I'm going to read something for you. Just like Jesus said back then, there shall not be left one stone upon another, there shall not be thrown down. Listen to what Peter says about the world you're living in. Amen. Because this world is finished now. Many of you out there are still building empires. You're, you're waiting for the Lord, but you're building empires. You've got churches so big and so consuming, so expensive. Amen. And they become a burden to the church. They become a burden to the people. Come on, brother. But it's your pride. Amen. They're just there to fuel your pride. Now, listen to what the scripture says is going to happen to all these, these buildings that you build here. Every one of them. Amen. Verse 9. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9. Uh, the Lord is not slack concerning, it, uh, concerning his promise. As some men count slackness. But it's long suffering to us, war. Yes. Jesus wants you to come. Huh? Yes. Jesus wants you to come. He wants you to come. You know, listen now. The, the people have you believing that Jesus is not who he is. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, when he was here, 
He spent all his time among the poor. Amen. We used to sing a song, the great physician now is here, the sympathizing Jesus. That's who he is. We used to sing that song about who Jesus is and who he was when he was here with us. Always among the poor, the needy, the sick, the frail, the weak, the forgotten, the neglected. That's who he was among. He didn't slide by in a Mercedes Benz or in a Lexus. He never slid by in an extremely expensive car. I wonder how many of you reach out to the people that you find are in those conditions. I wonder. With all the money that you make, I wonder. And so, they have you thinking that that's not who Jesus is. And sometimes you feel a little forgotten. Because sometimes you've forgotten too. The scripture said that Jesus said that foxes have holes. And birds, they have nests. But the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Praise the Lord. Until you know who Jesus is, you'll never make it. Your pastor stands up there in a seven or eight hundred dollar suit and tells you he represents Jesus Christ. No, he doesn't. Does not know who God is. Doesn't know who Jesus is. Doesn't know who Jesus is. Jesus is. I paid about eighty-nine dollars for this suit. About four years ago. <laughs> about $89 I paid for this suit. I don't mind telling you. They're standing up there in a $600 suit. A $400 pair of shoes. I recently had my shoes fixed for $50. Yes, sir. The church is not what they made it out to be. No, sir. They don't know who Jesus is. Huh? I inherited it. Come on, brother. Otherwise, said he inherited that from his brother, right? That's right. That's right. Otherwise, he inherited that suit from his brother. My son's wearing my one of my old jackets. Amen. We don't pride ourselves on on possessions, because the scripture says a man's life consists not in the abundance of the things which he possesses. So when you sit down and tell me that you've got three cars in a drive and, a, and, a, and you've got the American dream, you're on your way to hell with it. Amen. Got nothing to do with God. It's going to say that, let him that buy be as though he possess not. Even though you're able to buy, it's as if you possess nothing. Got to rise above what you see around you and recognize that they're all on their way to hell. Not because there are so many people on that road means it's the right road. Listen to what Peter said is going to happen to the world we're living in. Verse 10. 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 10. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise so you look up when you go outside and take a look up there at that sky those heavens up there the scripture said they're going to pass away with a great noise for those of you who are down here empire building you're down here building bigger 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 churches and expanding your so-called congregations. And you call it growth. And the scripture said as they increased, they forgot about me. You're more concerned about the numbers and the people and the money than you are about the things of God. And the elements 
shall melt with fervent heat. Amen. The buildings, the rocks, everything you see around you, the scripture said it's going to burn up. The trees and everything you see around you, the scripture said they're going to burn up. Amen. This world you're living in is, is going to burn up. Everything you see around you, that great car you paid $90,000 for, it's going to burn up. Amen. Nothing wrong with having it. But the scripture said that he let he let by be as though he possessed not. Be as though he possessed not. Amen. Be as though he possessed not. Shall melt with a fervent heat. And the element shall melt, melt with a fervent heat. The earth also. Yes. And the works that are therein. Amen. Everything you see. Every building. Ever made. Every road ever built. Every golf course ever made. Doesn't matter what it is. Every church building ever put up, they're going to burn down. They're going to melt with a fervent heat. There's going to be nothing left. I don't mind we live in a wilderness. Could have said that God said, I'm going to send a famine in the land, not a famine for bread, nor a famine for water, but a famine for hearing the word of the Lord. Amen. I don't mind that we live in a wilderness because it is a wilderness, you know. Can't find God anywhere. Everywhere you go, you see people calling on his name, but they're not living it right. They're not walking right. They're not talking right. A radio station. I turn it on. I want to hear something good. All I hear is him telling me about what, who won the, the, the soccer match yesterday. I'm not, I'm not interested. Amen. I don't care. For your information, I don't watch cricket. I don't watch football. Amen. I don't watch soccer. I don't watch basketball. I don't watch netball. I don't watch any of them. I'm not interested. There are too many people dying. I sit down and sing, I'm watching a basketball game. How many of those people are going to go home and die tonight? Not knowing who Jesus is. I'll tell you something. Most men in the restroom shouldn't be there. And most people calling on the name of the Lord still don't know him. And I'll tell you something else. If you were saved, you'd feel the pressing need not to go in and watch that basketball and that football game, but to go in and witness to the people that are sitting down watching it because they're the ones who are going to die without the law. Make a difference. Make a change. If you're not right, you can't make anybody else right. 